DD tanks. They were more than just a tank with a skirt. The DD stands for duplex drive. Sometimes they were called Donald Duck tanks. They were a swimming tank developed by the British during World War II. They were used by the Western Allies, most famously during the Normandy landings in June of 1944, where they saw mixed success. Often they are most remembered for their failings at Omaha Beach, something that was even highlighted in the film Saving Private Ryan. No armor has made it ashore. We got no DD tanks on the beach. Dog one is not open. Various ideas for floating tanks have been around since World War I. Using a flotation screen was, however, a new idea in World War II. The screen covered the top half of a tank, creating a canvas hull. This would increase the vehicle's freeboard, allowing the tank to become buoyant without adding flotation devices to the sides, which would make a tank difficult to load and unload on watercraft. The screen was very easy to unfold, so it did not interfere with the tank's combat ability once it made it to shore. The DD screen was adapted for Sherman use in April of 1943, but it was originally mass-produced for Valentine tanks. Shermans were better suited to the modification, as unlike the Valentine, they didn't need to point their gun towards the rear of the tank to raise the canvas. Training on DD tanks was undertaken by British, Canadian, and American crews. Training included learning to waterproof and maintain DD tanks, and importantly, how to escape should the tank sink. During trial, several tanks were lost. On April 4, 1944, six Valentine DDs sank, with the loss of six crew members. DD tanks had twin propellers and could swim up to 4.6 miles per hour or 7.4 kilometers an hour. They were steered either by the commander or the driver. The driver could swivel the propellers using a hydraulic system, and the commander could steer using a large tiller from his station on a platform at the rear of the turret. The skirt was supported by horizontal metal hoops and by 36 rubber tubes. These rubber tubes inflated by means of compressed air. This allowed the screen to be erected in just 15 minutes and rapidly collapsed once on shore, so the tanks could quickly engage the enemy. The main use of DD tanks was on D-Day, though they were also used in the Allied invasion of southern France in August of 44 and the British crossing of the Rhine in March of 45. Also, some were used on the Italian front. On D-Day, eight British, Canadian, and American tank battalions were equipped with DD tanks. They'd be moved near to the beaches using tank landing craft, which carried between four to five DD Shermans each. They would be launched about three kilometers or two miles from the shore and swim to the beaches. Out of the five beachheads on D-Day, there was mixed success. DDs were vulnerable to rough seas, which prevented many from being launched. At the Canadian beachhead of Juneau, 21 out of 29 tanks reached the beach. At Utah Beach, 27 out of 28 tanks launched made it to shore. It was at Omaha Beach that almost all of the tanks launched offshore were lost, which contributed to the high casualty rates and sluggish advance on the beach. Out of the first 29 tanks put to sea, 27 sank under conditions of waves up to 6 feet high. Most tank battalions compensated for the rough waters by launching their tanks closer to the beaches, but at Omaha, the tanks were launched from their landing craft too far out, at about 3 miles or 4.8 kilometers offshore. Most of the crews were rescued, with five crewmen known to have died during the sinkings. The initial loss was close to half the DD tanks designated for Omaha Beach. The remaining DD tanks would be delayed, so they could be directly offloaded onto the beach. After the war, interest in DD tanks decreased. Main battle tanks became too heavy to swim. As such, snorkel systems were more popular. However, some flotation screens were used into the 1980s, but they didn't use complicated propeller systems, rather their standard running gear, normally their tracks, for water propulsion. This is a British FV-432 armored personnel carrier. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for floating along with me until the end of the video. If you liked the video, consider watching another one. It helps the channel grow. Take care and have a nice day.